and Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic. And this is the Business Zone, Fridays, 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on MorrisMediaLive.com. Good afternoon, everyone. We are so happy to be here, and we hope you're going to be excited as we are. Um, it's been a long time coming, huh, Gilbert? Oh, yeah. This has been a long time coming. It's been many years, Crystal, that we've been working on this. Uh, by the way, this is Crystal Mitchell, and I'm Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic, and we are on the business zone. So, Crystal, do you want to walk us into this uh, program? Uh, yeah, we're going to... Um Hopefully, we're going to inspire you guys. We're going to encourage you guys. We're going to provide you with um, tools and resources that will help you build bigger and better businesses. Um, it's important that you, when you have that concept and that idea for a business, that you're able to tap into all the resources that are out there in our communities and within your um, your peer structure so that you, too, can be successful. Um I've been teaching workshops and classes for a long time and coaching and mentoring individuals in this arena. And I know when you spend more time with them and um, and they, they have more hands-on access, that uh, they're more likely to become successful. That is true. That is true, Crystal. And uh, I'll just tell, you, I'll tell my listeners out there a little bit about my background. Many of them already know, but I'll say it again. Uh, I've worked, uh, I've been in the industry for over 20 years. I've worked with small businesses in a variety of different industries from construction, retail, manufacturing, service industry, professional services, all of those types of things. Working with uh, large agencies like LA Unified School District, LA Community College District, uh, LA Metro, Valley Economic Development Center. We work with a variety of different businesses. As a matter of fact, Crystal, We've secured over $81 million with small business in contracts for small businesses since uh, 2003. So we're doing some great work here for small businesses. Yeah, that's um, we w myself as well. My background is um, I've been in a business as well 20 years. I'm an entrepreneur at, at, at the heart of who I am. Uh, after all the titles I have, I am an entrepreneur. I'm a third generation entrepreneur. My grandfather, my grandmother, um, my mom, I have aunts and that an aunt that's an entrepreneur. So this has gone on in my life, and I was um, exposed to it as a child. So it's in your blood. It's in my blood. It's in your I'm, DNA. <laughs> in my DNA. In <laughs> fact, they say that there's three percent of the population that were born to be entrepreneurs. I'm one of those three percent. That's great. That's great. And so I live it and breathe it, and um, and then I have a knack for teaching. That's also in the blood. And we have a number of um, academics and teachers in my family. So. Um, my business um, has always, my area of expertise is accounting and finance and marketing and um, actually a teacher. And it's funny because I kind of fell into the teaching. I, it was always incorporated in my business. And so one day I was talking to one of my colleagues and partners and she was saying, you know, you're a trainer. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not. And she goes, yes, you are. And then as I thought about it and with my clients, my accounting clients, I always talk to them, but I want them to know what I'm doing. And so I'm teaching them the same thing that I'm doing for them so that they can keep track of their own finances. Excellent. Excellent. So my area of expertise, again, is accounting. Um, I'm also the co-director of Recycling Black Dollars. Oh, great. And um, so Recycling Black Dollars is a passion of, well, actually, let me start first. My people are my passion. Mm -hmm. And the concept of taking our dollars and bringing our dollars back into our community is really, really important. And Recycling Black Dollars has been in the community for 28 years. And this founder, Mohammed Nazardine, that was his passion. And so um, when the opportunity came for me to become the co-director of, uh, of, of the organization, it fit right in with everything else that I was doing. Perfect. So I spent a lot of my time with our business owners in our community, helping them become better business owners. Excellent. I love that. Very excellent. Excellent background. Uh, it shows us what you bring to the table, what you can and will do for small businesses, and we're very excited about this. What I'd like to do is talk a little bit about what the business zone is all about. Uh, many people who uh, have known us, they know what we do, but we want to let them know what the business zone is about. And the, the mission of the business zone is to provide 
tools and resources to small businesses within the supply diversity environment where entrepreneurship and business opportunity come together to foster growth and generate success. And that's really what the Business Zone is all about. We're here to really foster those businesses. We want to be an advocate for yeah, small business. we do. We do. And we'll do whatever, by, by whatever means necessary, we'll do that. Kicking, screaming, pulling them, dragging them, holding them accountable. We'll do that. Exactly. So sometimes, um, and those of you that have been in my workshops and classes and that I've coached, you know, sometimes I have to uh, have some tough love. And I think sometimes to get past some of our fears and our other ego issues, the tough love is necessary. Yes. To, so you'll know that you have the skill set and the capability of doing what you can do, but you got to step out there and make it happen. And they'll love you afterwards. You know, once you provided them that tough love and they see that you really care about their business's best interest, they will, they'll, they'll love you for that. Exactly. Now, I want to go over the topics for today's shows just so people know what we're going to be covering today. We're going to be looking at small business startups uh, what uh, startup businesses are all about, uh, some of the 10 top reasons why small businesses fail. We're going to look at building uh, a better business resource for tomorrow. And also, we're going to look at seven ways to tell if your business idea is a successful one. So all of these things we're going to put out there. And I just want to let the entrepreneurs know that class has begun. So tune on in. And ask us any questions. Our phone number here is 323-293-3375. That's 29, uh, I'm sorry, 323-293-3375. So you can give us a call. Any questions you may have, give us a call. Crystal and I will be happy to answer. So Crystal, uh, what do you want to tell us today about startup businesses? Uh, well, startup businesses... Um you have to understand what your marketplace is and what you're tr what you're trying to do, uh, making sure that the concept is feasible. Yeah, um, I think, um, and I'm sure Gilbert, you've ha come across this. Someone, I've always said that sometimes people fall into business. Mm -hmm. They've had a skill or a talent. Someone told them that they were an amazing chef, and uh, so they just start cooking, and next thing they know, they're in business. Uh, <laughs> but the, 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 the platform was, the foundation hadn't been set. They, they hadn't li gotten their license. I mean, obviously, they had to have a license with the health board if, the, if they were doing a, a, a restaurant or something, yeah. or food or catering. Mm -hmm. But uh, other areas, they tend to not, pay a lot of attention to. Yes. And marketing is a big thing. Yes. And marketing can make or break your business. Mm -hmm. And I find that within with some of the businesses and within our community, that's the last that's not even a thought. Right. I, it's just like I have this fantastic idea. Um, my family loves my food. Uh, everyone's been t told me I should go into business, and I just went. If you build it, they'll come. Right? Yeah, if they build it, it's <laughs> come. But then it becomes the best sex, best uh, secret in the whole community. Right. Nobody even knows Nobody that knows you exist, that. <laughs> but your family <laughs> and your few friends. But after a while, you know, then the glamour runs wears off. Right, the newness is worn off. So now nobody's coming in the doors. Yes, and, and unless they happen to be in an environment where you have a lot of walking traffic, which is not always, mm -hmm. um, then, they're, then they're starting to have problems right. financially. They can't meet their payroll mm -hmm. or they can't order all the food that they need or their supplies. And um, then the quality falls off mm -hmm. because you have to, you don't have all the means to make the business work. And so that's some of the things that I've found out, and that's some of the areas with our growth businesses that you have to really talk to them about, and customer service, and all the parts that go to making a successful business. And the thing, one of the things that I notice out there, because I've got a big pool of small businesses, Crystal, that I work with, and I'm sure you know that as well. Many things that small startup businesses do not know is that they got to ask themselves questions. You know, am I a self-starter? Do I know how to start on my own? Can I be self-sufficient? Can I do the things that I need to do in order to sustain my family and su sustain my business simultaneously? Many businesses don't think about that because just like he said earlier, a lot of small businesses think that if you build it, they will come. Right. And it's never that way. Another question you, they want to ask themselves as a small business is, how well do you get along with people? Yes, that's you, important. you got to learn how to get along with people because if you don't, some of these people are, are going to become ambassadors for you. 
They're going to tell people about your business, tell them about your product or your services. They're going to refer people to you. So if you have no friends and you have no one really in your corner, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for you. So, you know, these are some of the things that we, we, we notice when we're, we're looking at startup businesses. Now, how good are you at making decisions? That's another question that entrepreneurs need to understand. Uh, many entrepreneurs can't really make decisions on their own. No, they a, can't. A lot of them really depend and look at other people to make some decisions for them. So we want them to know that making decisions are very good and uh, strategic partners and lenders and, and, and uh, uh, contract providers, they look at those qualities in entrepreneurs and small startup businesses as well. well and actually, it's... Um you do a lot of stepping outside of your comfort zone oh, yes. if you're an entrepreneur. Oh, you, yes. you, if you're an introvert and you're not quite sure how to engage people or, and how to approach people, then it's very difficult to get your idea out there so people will really understand what it is you're doing. And as you said, if you've got to talk to an investor or, or you have to reach out and find someone to ask some questions about your business, um, you don't have those skill sets. So, yeah, you're right. And then... Whether or not you like people, if you have a business that dealing with the public, then, mm -hmm. yeah, you kind of have to like people. It's oh, not yes. just about your skill or oh, what yes. it is, the service that you're providing. Oh, yes. If you have a big problem with crowds or rest, you know, and you own a restaurant and you're and you do happen to have a, a major following, then you have to know how to service those people yeah. and, and to be friendly with those people to to. Um, be welcoming, warm, and opening so that they know that, wow, this person's approachable, and I really like them as a person, and I'm going to continue to frequent and, and, and support their business, and I'm going to tell everyone else I know. But if you don't have those skill sets, then you have to go out and find out how to acquire those skill sets. And there's many organizations, Toastmasters, excellent for helping you become comfortable in speaking to people and, and voicing your opinions and, and, um, and helping people understand how, and how to communicate. And speaking of resources, uh, you know, our special guest today, which is uh, Nolan Rollins from the uh, president of the Los Angeles Urban League. He'll be here in about 15 minutes to uh, share some words of wisdom with us and small businesses. That's another great spot that small businesses can go if they need resources. Yes. Uh, the Los Angeles Urban League, they're here and they've been here for many years, over 94 years, and they've been here for a long time to assist small businesses. And many small businesses need to take advantage of those resources. Another thing that I notice is that in order to be a successful startup and small business, small business owners, they need to be able to plan and organize. They need to understand how to plan. You know, many small businesses don't have those skills. And if you don't have it, that's okay. That's okay. You want to bring someone in who can handle that for you. And that's why one of the key things, there are five things that small businesses need to know when they're starting up. You need to have an effective business consultant. You need to have one of those in your corner. <laughs> You need to have a CPA. Yes, you do. You need to have an attorney. You do. In your corner. You need to have a banker in your corner as well. And last but not least, you need to have an insurance agent that you can rely on who can provide you information and show you ways how to minimize, uh, uh, maximize on, on opportunities and minimize your costs for your insurance um, um, activities. So these are five things that startup businesses really need to know uh, and, and, and keep this into their resources so they can access those opportunities. And I really think it's more than just their resources. That becomes your team. Yes. That, that's the people that you go to to tap into their resources and to their expertise to help you do what you do. And um, in, in today's world, collaboration is one of the key factors of running a business or an organization or anything, even if you're just an, you know running an event. You want to collaborate with other people because now you have their resources plus your resources, and then they can tap into their, their collaborators and that you can have their resources. So it really creates a really bigger pool. So that village or it's all working together. Takes to, a village. Takes a village. <laughs> and so when you look at those people, you look at them as your team. You need to develop your team. Yeah. And one of the things that small businesses need to take a look at also as a startup business, you want to ask yourself, are you motivated? 
Are you motivated to do this thing? This thing that you're trying to embark on right now, it's not an easy thing. You're going to have to give up a lot of hours and time with your family to spend time with this business. So you want to know, are you motivated to do this? Are you dedicated? You know, I know I spend lots of time uh, starting and running my business. As a matter of fact, my business is called uh, Buchanan and Associates. And uh, uh, Buchanan Associates is a management consulting firm that provides supply diversity support for small businesses. We do a minority and woman-owned certifications. We do management um, support services, infrastructure development. We help small businesses develop their infrastructure so they can be efficient. Uh, we've developed a, a tool called Small Biz Pro, which is very helpful to small businesses, which today I'm going to give away 10 mm. copies of that software to help small businesses become self-sufficient. They can use that tool to access their documents in 10 seconds or less from anywhere in the world. Wow, that's great, Gilbert. Oh, so yes. how, how, how would our guests... Um, be able to um, receive one of those copies. Well, really, program. what I'd like to do is to have the first 10 callers in here, and our number here is 323-293-3375. That's 323-293-3375. So the first 10 callers, I'll be happy to uh, give away this, this free software. And as a matter of fact, I'll give you lifetime membership on that. So, and I'll tell you a little bit about this system. What it does, it helps you to manage your organization. So you don't have to go looking for your documents anywhere at all. You know, a lot of small businesses, they're not organized. So they've got their license in one little box over there. They got their insurance. They got their business plan somewhere else. This system will put all of your organizational documents in one place. What it also does, it allows small businesses to access procurement opportunities, bids, oh. yes, bids and procurement opportunities. And finally, the system also assists them in conducting market research. Wow, that's so, good. So this is a phenomenal tool that my first 10 callers will be able to obtain free of cost, free of cost for life. I think just worth the, what's worth is the market research because oh, most yes. people have a hard time oh, yes. with the market research. They don't know how to research. They don't know where to go. Market analysis, all of those things, they really, a lot of businesses don't know how to do that. So that tool really helps them. Right. So that's going to be exciting. So, guys, you want to call in on 323-293-3375 and be a lucky recipient of this incredible program. Now, when he says it connects up helps you keep um, track of all your documents. So that insurance policy, uh, your business plan, your financial statements, your last three financial statements, because you know when you go to the bank or, or you go anywhere nowadays that, you know, that has to do with your financials, that's what they're going to ask you oh, for. Yes. Oh, and yeah. you're digging up this information. Um, if you are in, an, in, in the, uh, an industry where you have to show your proof of insurance, then where you got to go find that? you got to go rummaging through your file cabinets and hopefully it got filed in there by yourself or whomever your assistant is. So it's important that as a business person, everything that you need is at your fingertips so that you can go out and drive business because you as the owner, that's your role exactly. in your company exactly. is to go out and recruit and bring in as much business as you can um, and, and attend workshops and classes that will make you a better business owner, not sitting around in your office working with the paperwork. No. You, If you can have a central location for that, that streamlines a lot of your duties, your in-house office duties, where then you can spend most of your time outside, because that's where you need to be, to drive business. Exactly. And and this tool, this tool is so phenomenal that what it really does, when small businesses uh, obtain a contract, they can upload those contracts into this system. So later on, they can access this, op this, this contract wherever they are in the world. If they're, in, if they're in the field working on a project and the project manager brings up a point that says, hey, you know what? This was supposed to be in your contract and you're not doing it. Uh, you know, I'd like you to do this task. And all you can do as a business owner is just download that, that contract right there and then using your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop and look at the scope of work of that contract and see if what this project manager is telling you is actually what 
you're supposed to be doing. That saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of stress and a lot of conflict. That's fantastic because I know sometimes um, when I have someone that I've done business plans for and I'm asking, and not that I like to do that because I think people should do their own business plans, yes. but every now and then there's some people that that's just that in their forte. Yes. So if they can provide me with all of their their resources, then I can help put that in, in, the, in the structure that it needs to be in. But here's the thing. When I get to that place and I'll go, well, do you have the – wow, I don't have that. Yeah. And then we spend all this time yeah. – where they're trying to search and find out where this information is. Oh, yes. well, but if they had a tool like yours, oh, yes. it could really, really work for I'm them. I'm telling you, Small Business, Small Business Pro is a revolutionary tool for small businesses. Helps to make their lives much easier. It's going to really, really provide them and put them in a strategic position to be much more successful. I think so. One of the things that this tool also does, there's a tremendous amount of value to this tool. What it does, it helps construction firms. For example, when they're doing their certified payroll, their labor compliance, their contract compliance, the system is set up so that it has step-by-step -step guidance built in. So even if you've never done a public work contract before, you don't know what type of reports to do for your labor compliance or contract compliance or certified payroll, this system walks you through that. And it shows you step-by-step -step what types of reports. So this is a, an invaluable tool that small businesses really will benefit from. And we're looking for the next 10 callers to uh, give them this, this tool for free. So callers, go ahead, give us a call at 323-293-3375. We'll be happy to provide you that opportunity. And as we said at the top of the show, Crystal, uh, our guest today is uh, Mr. Nolan Rollins from the uh, the Los Angeles Urban League, and he should be here in about eight minutes. And uh, he's going to be talking about some great resources as well uh, from his standpoint at the Urban League. And I, I can't wait to have him on here so he can uh, share some of that with our viewers. Right. So when we come, when we're not at break yet, but when we do, he'll be back with us. Um, I, I really like Nolan. Nolan's a really, really cool guy. I, when he came to Urban League a couple of years ago, a lot of my workshops and I have a collaborative partnership with the Los Angeles Urban League and myself and Recycling Black Dollars. And um, they're just been wonderful in helping me do what I do with my businesses and with with our Recycling Black Dollars and as well as my helping them. So we've had some fantastic programs and workshops that have come out of there in the last couple of years. And um, he's been supportive of all of that. That's great. Of everything that we've been doing. So, that is great. Right. So you guys will be in for a major treat. He's, I, an, he's an incredible I wordsmith. can't wait. So if you haven't heard him speak, then you will be quite impressed with him. So let me ask you something, Gilbert. Yes. Uh, with some of your clients, um, Explain the procurement, and we're going to have more shows and talk about the supplier diversity, um, but explain what procurement means to the average, not necessarily just the construction business, because a lot of people, I think, feel that that's just an area for construction companies. Okay, Crystal, I'm going to go ahead and address that um, real quickly. Um, the procurement piece is uh, companies – Contract providers, they want to purchase certain items, product or services, and they're looking for businesses to provide those products or services as vendor or supplier. So that process there is called procurement. So when small businesses are looking for opportunities, that's the, that's the path they go down. And, and we try to help them so that they can learn how to do the procurement process. But I see we have a phone call coming in. Someone is interested in our uh, uh, Small Biz Pro program. So, caller, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Uh, what's your name, caller, and where are you calling from? Uh, this is uh, Ishmael from Dallas. Yes. How are you doing today, Ishmael? Good, good, good. Uh, welcome to the, to the uh, Morris Media. Thank you. My family, so. Th thank I, you. I would be interested in that software. That, that, that seems very valuable. What type of business do you have? Well, I'm, I'm a network engineer, but I'm a small business investor. And also, I'm in the process of um, trying to obtain a Chick-fil-A. So, uh, oh, wow. Uh, how nice. So. Excellent. Excellent. So how long have you been in business, Ishmael? Uh, about four years. About four uh, years? Yes. And, and it's more I, I invest. Oh, oh, you invest. You invest in businesses. 
correct small business. Oh, okay. Well, maybe some of our uh, listeners might want to talk to you to see if you uh, will be uh, happy to uh, invest in some of their ventures. Most definitely, most definitely. Uh, uh, I think that's my calling more of. And, and eventually, I, w- I do want my own business. But, y- yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, have you worked with many small businesses so far? Mm, a couple of them. Um, one with the clothing line and um, a couple dealing with, with the uh, food industry. Okay, so I, I want to ask you, what type of challenges or what types of uh, barriers do you see some of those small businesses facing? Um, the, the, the major one is, I think, is, is giving up too quick uh-huh. on, 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 their, on, you know, on their dream. Yeah. Um, or even, even worse is when you make a little money. Yeah. Um, you, 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 you don't reinvest in your business. Right, right, right. And so, that's that's one of the things that Crystal and I do. We work with these businesses, help them to understand the importance of building their infrastructure and uh-huh. al- and also growing the business and right. reinvesting in the business. Uh-huh. Yes. Right. So I, at one time, I, I, I did, I, I started a um, business that, that was pretty, pretty, it was doing pretty well. Yes. And, and I had I had a couple of people approach me. Yes. And and they were they were you know wanted to tell me how I could you know how how they could make me make it into millions what I was doing. Right, right, right. And and, and they came they gave me their spiel and I was listening to them. Yes. And um, at the end of the at the end of the time I, I told them that well I started this business with just a few hundred dollars. Right. So if you can do that for me. What's stopping you from using your own few hundred dollars, starting your own business like this, and making millions? Exactly. And that kind of stopped in their tracks because, you know, I'm, I'm about business, so yes, you know, I, you, know <laughs> you don't always fall for everything. Right, right. I hear that. What I'm going to do, Ishmael, I'm going to have uh, our our contact phone person uh, take your information, so we can send you out the the link to the software, and uh, I want to work very closely with you moving forward. Okay. Okay, good so, deal. So, yeah, if you could just leave your phone number and everything, uh, contact information, that would be great. Okay, I will. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. So, uh, this is great. That was an excellent call. Uh, Ishmael got some great incentives and some great ideas. Uh, he's an investor. Many many of my uh, entrepreneurs out there might be interested in that. So, we're going to take his, his information off the air so we can make it available if there's other uh Uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs out there. But uh, what we're going to do right now, we're getting ready to take a break, Crystal. Okay, that'd be fantastic. It's amazing. We already burned up 30 minutes. I know, fast, huh? Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's it's like uh, we just got it. We're just getting started here. I know. We're already 30 minutes in, and we still have so much to go cover. Oh, yes. Well, like we said, our guest is going to be Mr. Nolan Rollins. Rollins, the CEO and president of the Los Angeles Urban League. So when we come back, we will be introducing him, and you guys will be in for uh, an incredible treat. That sounds great. And I know that uh, Mr. Rollins, he's got some great insights because I've been reading up on his bio here a little bit, and I see some very interesting things. So that's excellent. So we'll be back in about two minutes. Okay. Welcome back to the Business Zone. This is Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic, along with my co-host, Crystal. Hi, how are you? So we're all back and we are all excited about our guest and we want you to be as excited about him as well. Uh, Nolan Rollins, the president and CEO of the Los Angeles Urban League, and he also is the commissioner of the Board of Airport Commission, uh, Commissions. He was appointed for a term, uh, I believe it was last year, yes. he was appointed, and uh, it will go on to June 30th, 2019. Commissioner Rollins, an attorney, is the seventh president and CEO of the 94-year-old Los Angeles Urban League. In that position, he leads a strong staff focused in the areas of economics and uh, workforce development, early childhood education, health, parental engagement, policy, and social justice. 
prior to assuming the the uh, Urban League position in February 2013, Commissioner Rollins served as the president of the New Orleans affiliate of the Urban League, where he designed and implemented employment and housing strategies to help stabilize the local communities following Hurricane Katrina. Simultaneously, um, Rollins was the chairperson of the New Orleans Aviation Board responsible for the airport's redesigned internal operations. He chaired the con construction committee responsible for over $400 million in new construction and renovations and lead led the financial, environmental, and constructability due diligence necessary for New Orleans to build a new airport. So I am going to introduce him and let him tell us more about himself. I absolutely is one of my most favorite people on the planet. Mr. And so I'm Roland. going to share him with you. <laughs> Welcome to the business zone. Hey, listen, thank you both so much for having me here. I mean, it, it is um, an absolute pleasure uh, to be sharing this time, but uh, most importantly, to be having conversations about business. I think far too often we uh, spend time not really having substantive conversations. I say all the time and every day that poverty is an economic co a condition, and the only thing that's going to change that economic condition is an economic solution. So if we aren't having conversations about business, if we aren't having conversations about the economy, if we aren't having conversations about procurement and how money actually moves and how businesses can be strengthened to take advantage of this new economy that's coming around, then we're not really having a substantive conversation. So, so for me, um, this is an honor to be here because these are the things that I think are the at the precipice, at the spear point of the new civil rights movement. It's an economic conversation. So I laud both of you for uh, what you're doing here. I laud for the fact that you are in uh, a particular establishment with an entrepreneur who is out there really pushing and really making sure that both her business can grow, but also that people can hear this kind of important information from both of you. So, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. And I really, really, Crystal and I, we appreciate you being here to share your wisdom because you've been in this industry for a long time. You've worked in a variety of different um, economies. And you've seen the difference in uh, one versus the other in the New Orleans environment as opposed to the Los Angeles. So we're just wondering, what do you think are some of the, 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 the ingredients that helps to build a better business for tomorrow? Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that we, we've, we've got to be focused on where the trends are taking us, right? Because inevitably, uh, and, and I want to be very specific here, because I, what, what I... Uh, I, I hate to do is play in generalities yes. because what people want to know is where can I play now? Exactly. So when I think about a place like um, New Orleans, so so this is my really my third economy being in, starting in Baltimore, mm -hmm. um, where I was the COO of the Urban League there. Um, that economy was really about rebuilding the community, particularly rebuilding the wet, the west and east sides of Baltimore. So right. the question then became. How do businesses get engaged with that? Mm -hmm. How do they ensure that there are people who are being trained to work on that, that spending that's happening? How do we ensure that there are people who are, their businesses can actually participate? So really understanding how that city was growing and where it was going to push its growth. I mean, uh, the telltale signs are always there. Right. Um, uh, what we have to know is that people are coming back to cities again. Right. People left cities for a long period of time. This is nationally, but now they're coming back to cities because you realize that it's far too expensive to build the infrastructure outside of cities that cities have. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing a resurgence of cities now. So you see a resurgence of New Orleans in the city after Katrina. So mm -hmm. what did they say? Th they said, listen, we want to focus on entrepreneurship. We want to focus on business. There are things that are happening in New Orleans that have never happened before there because it's been opened up in a way that there's conversations about entrepreneurship in a very real way. How do we make New Orleans a better place for all New Orleanians? How do we make access a better thing for all New Orleanians? But then you fast forward to a place like Los Angeles where uh, I think Los Angeles is in the beginning of its very best days mm. if we are vigilant about everyone sharing in those best days. I hear At that. the airport, we are going to be moving some $13 billion. Wow. Metro is doing uh, double digits. It, what Metro is going to be moving is going to dwarf compared to what the, what the airport is moving. Mm -hmm. So when we think about these economies, we're seeing where they're going. Right. So I'm, we know that there's a tremendous amount of public spending that's going to be happening. So with that public spending, the mm -hmm. private sector spending is going to happen right next to it. Exactly. There's no 
There's no mistaking that Korean Air has made a decision down on Wilshire to build one of the tallest hotels I totally in the nation. I totally agree. Yep. There's no mistaking. Yep. It has everything to do with transportation changing. It has everything to do with revitalizing the downtown and the city area. So, so when we look around and we see cranes in the sky and we see uh, walls that were where there weren't walls before, mm-hmm. that's the economy talking to right, us. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the economy talking to us. So it's important for us to really pay attention to the signs around us because they're there all the time. They're on Crenshaw, yes. right? We're, on, we're in a place right now where the economy is screaming to us. Guess what? We're about to make billions of dollars of investment. So the question then becomes for our community, what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. Now, what are some of those opportunities that you see at the airport, for example, that small businesses can participate in and what do they need to do to get some of that? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great question. So here's what I will tell you. So luckily for me, getting on this airport commission was like riding a bike. So I led the airport commission in New Orleans for five years. So uh, when I got here to L.A. and was eventually um, asked to be on this commission, I walk through the door knowing exactly what it takes to run and operate an airport. Mm. But even more importantly, what it takes to operate an airport in an inclusionary way. Mm. And here's what I tell people all the time. I may be an airport commissioner, but I'm an Urban League president first. Mm -hmm. So when I walk through the door, I have a predisposition. My disposition is... Let's make sure that those who have been locked out and dispossessed, the doors are open and that they are possessed. Let's make sure that if we're going to spend money, we're creating the space to get that done. So for the listeners, so what does that mean? So I heard you ask me, listeners. Let me tell you what that means. (laughs) So when I got to uh, the commission, I said to them, what do our procurement policies look like? How are we ensuring economic inclusion? Where are we ensuring that we're giving points for local business participation, minority-owned business for participation? Mm -hmm. Where is that happening? They said, we're doing it in a few areas. I said, well, we're going to change that. We're going to make sure that we're doing it everywhere. A dollar and contract cannot move out of here without having real uh, live uh, goals connected to it that are percentages that make people win or lose the bid. So what you'll see, really, it'll be... Going through the city council, really, as soon as they come off of break, what you'll see is sweeping new policies coming out of the airport that are going to ensure local participation all the way to the point that on uh, on Tuesday of next week at the airport hotel, uh, and we'll make sure to get all the information out to the listeners, we're actually doing a, a small business procurement and how to do business with the airport, which oh, wow. I'm going to be on the panel. The director of the and CEO of the airport is going to be on the panel, the operations persons, because I am very serious about us doing business with people who are in the community who deserve the opportunity and the chance. But I'm also serious about creating the atmosphere for that to happen because it's one thing just to talk about it. Right. If we aren't as a board saying this is what we're committed to, we're committed to these percentages, we're committed to ensuring that people have an opportunity, then it's not going to happen because people only do what gets measured. That which does not get measured does not get done. And that's a great point because my system that I developed called Small Biz Pro was developed primarily out of that type of uh, process. I used to work with LA Unified School District, and my job was uh, the assistant program manager for the small business program. So we, we launched these boot camps, we put on all these different training programs to get businesses ready so they can get opportunities. But when they came to the table, there was no opportunities for them. They were told that you're not ready yet, you're not qualified, you're, you're not eligible. So all of those things make the small businesses become disenchanted. So what we, and, and they tell them, well, you don't have your paperwork in order, you don't have your certification, your insurance. So that's why I developed Small Biz Pro. And Small Biz Pro is a system that will allow small businesses to upload their documents so they can access those documents in 10 seconds or less from anywhere in the world. So now, with your system you're talking about, I'm seeing where this will tie into that tremendously for small businesses. But, you know, I mean, those are the kind of innovations we need, right? Because what we know about our businesses is that they're great at the craft. They're challenged at the business. Yes. Right. They're challenged at the business. So when we can develop solutions that allow the business to be easier or solutions that allow them to really be able to focus on the craft, yes. we're putting them in a better position because that's about building capacity. Exactly. Right? That's about them being able to say, 
listen, here's where here are where my documents are. Mm-hmm. I can get to my documents at any given time yes. with no problem whatsoever. What is it that you need? Yes. While they're saying, now I'm going to go out here and do the craft. Right. The craft of whether it be construction, construction related, whether it be professional services, mm-hmm. whatever it is, you know, what, uh, retail, whatever it is, yes. they can go do what they have a passion for. Because what we know about most entrepreneurs and people who are in business, they have a passion for the thing that they do. Mm-hmm. Right. Passion is not necessarily for business. Right. It's for the thing, thing that, that they, they do. do. Exactly. Exactly. And they get caught up in all of the stuff and then that distracts them from doing what they do and then they become frustrated. They become frustrated, frustrated. and disenchanted. They don't want to be a part of the process anymore. Right. And then they step away right. and then those opportunities are off the table for them. because, And then it doesn't look good for those that are trying. Because mm-hmm. the ones that do come to the table that's not prepared, then it it kind of sets a precedence for everybody at that point. So, you know, it behooves us to make sure that everybody that is stepping up to that plate to take advantage of those opportunities are prepared and ready for those opportunities. And that's obviously why we do the workshops that we do is helping you prepare to give you a better foundation and a structure for your business so you can scale yourself up to these opportunities. I mean, listen, I I think the value of of exactly what you're talking about, I think it's huge because um, people need the opportunity to understand what they don't understand. Right. Right. So what you do is you provide that space where people can then come in and say, oh, now we understand how these things work together. And it's critically important, not just for the business, but it's also critically important for us to actually develop a pool of individuals who can take advantage of the, co- the growing and coming economy. I mean, exactly. we've got to, you know, our, our teachers who are listening may not like this. We've got to teach to the test. Oh, if we definitely. know where the economy is going. Yep. We right. need to be developing businesses, developing whether it be the back office protocols or yep. whether it be helping them to strengthen right. the craft of what they're doing right. so that we can take advantage of what's going to happen because I would just candidly say if we aren't paying attention to the telltale signs that are happening right now, it's our own fault mm-hmm. for not being able to take advantage of it. Exactly. Them. Because no one, in, no one in business is going to give you anything. That's right. The business is about providing a service to a consumer who's going to purchase it. Right. So if you're going to provide a service, it has to be the service that, one, that people are actually going to be willing to pay for. Mm-hmm. And, two, that you have the back office support so that you can make more money. Because exactly. Because I want everyone to be really clear about this. If you hear nothing else that I say right now. I believe businesses should be in business to make money. Yes. Period. That's, that's the only reason they should that's be there. That's the bottom line. <laughs> money. That's the bottom Absolutely line. Absolutely money. This is not about charity. It is not about uh, emotion. It is purely transactional. Yep. How right. do I get a, a service into the stream of commerce that you are going to pay for? It? Right. That's business. Right. That's business. And we should not be afraid to have those cut and dry conversations that are, quite frankly, emotionless. Oh, right? Yes. Where, where we're right. not having an emotional conversation about doing business. We're having a transactional conversation about what you're providing is exactly what I need. I'm willing to pay you for what you're providing so that we both get what we need. And those are some of the things that we try. We, we're using this platform to try to teach and share with entrepreneurs and, and, and small businesses because we want them to understand that this isn't about uh, a privilege that you have or something is supposed to be out there for you. you got to demonstrate that you bring a value to the table. So the consumer will want to purchase your product or services for those values. And that's really what this is all about. When we talk about value proposition and we talk about, you know, features and benefits and we talk about, you know, all of those different types of things, it's, it's the same types of things that we're trying to do. Absolutely. I mean, and, and I think that that's, those are the kinds of things that we have to focus on. Yes. We've got to focus on strengthening uh, our business pool. We've got to focus on keeping our eye on the potential opportunities that exist out there. Um, and we've got to be where the action is. Right? Yes. We cannot assume that the action is going to come to us. It's just not going to do that. Right. right. So it's, the action is generally in places where it forces you to go look for it. Right. If you don't go look for it, I, my grandfather would always say to me, uh, I have never seen opportunity knock on my door. Right. You have <laughs> to go get it. Knock. You have to go get it. And it's funny because within our communities that, and I, and I know I deal with this um, in a lot of our classes and workshops, is, you know, they don't reach it to search. I mean, it really is. Nowadays, Google is like your best friend. All you have to do is Google. But I remember the very first, in fact, this is how I met Gilbert. I went to a procurement um, workshop or subversity to buy supply that um, was being given. And Gilbert was one of the speakers. And um, 
I was interested. They were saying that was such a small percentage of our community that took a, took um, opportunities for the supplier diversity and and for the certifications. And there was only so many. And I think the number was wow, it's like fifteen hundred. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, number. that's a very small percentage considering in Southern California, there's about four hundred thousand minority-owned businesses. And then if you take the whole state of California, there's over 800,000 and small businesses that are minorities, mm-hmm. being whichever one, whether it's vets, but it's the overall um, um, volume of all of them. And I'm thinking, how do you get 800,000 businesses and you only have 1,500 1, 1, of them that are actually gotten certified? That's pitiful. That's so I pitiful. started asking questions, and most people didn't know. They thought that it was only construction-based. So they didn't know that that the governments and the school districts and 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 corporations actually outsource a lot of those opportunities to small businesses. They had no clue. And so that's, again, that information not getting to a people when they need it. And when they do hear about it, it's too late. It's right. like they're on the tail end of the opportunity, and there's nothing you can do with it on the, on the tail end. You're absolutely right. I mean, when you look at a place like an airport, an airport is roughly 90 to 93 percent outsourced. Right. Literally, like everything that we have there that you see there, the vast majority of it is outsourced. Right. It is a private sector contractor doing it, whether it be food, janitorial, airlines, um, construction, electric, every yeah. single piece yeah. is an opportunity. Yeah. And I think that's how we've got to be thinking about right. this, multiple opportunities. Now, now, how how do those small businesses, we, w- when we come back, we want to talk about how um, small businesses can access some of those resources and also what they need to do to position themselves to get in on some of those opportunities. So uh, are we going to take a break? All right, we'll, we'll, we'll take a break, and uh, we'll come back in uh, two minutes so we can deal with this. And this is a great topic. I'm loving this. Mr. Rollins, thank you for being here, sir. This is great. <laughs> we'll take a break. It supposed to. It ain't for you, though. Said I'd be big up way too much of common. And he blew it. He blew it. Welcome back to the Business Zone. This is Gilbert Buchanan along with Crystal Mitchell and our special guest, Mr. Nolan Rollins from the Los Angeles Urban League and also Commissioner of the Los Angeles Airport. Uh, So we were talking about earlier some great things about opportunities and airport and and, and, and procurement and all of that. And one of the things that we wanted to ask uh, Mr. Rollins real quickly is... How do small businesses get involved in those opportunities at the airport? What do they need to do, and how can they get started? So, so again, I, what, I, what I tend to do is, is tell people to look at the end of the game, right? So when we push policy that says you need 25%, you need 10, whatever the policy numbers are, those are all opportunities for people to participate. Now, here's the wrinkle. In order for you to participate, getting certified is critical because businesses do not get credit toward their 25, 35 percent mm. unless you are certified. Mm-hmm. Unless you are certified DBE, unless you're certified if you're in, um, uh, in the food industry, ACDBE. So you have to get your certifications, mm-hmm. particularly when you're, when you're doing things with airports or other public facilities that actually, uh, that actually gonna make a difference. That's what makes you competitive. So it's not just your craft, it's not just your ability to manage the back office, It's also you being certified because this is about winning. So at the end of the day, teams are developed that are going to maximize their ability to win. So you'll have your prime. Sometimes they'll be African-American or minority. You'll have your subs. You'll create this team that when it's all said and done, everything that the municipality says, the box is checked. If it's a box for vets, we've got a veteran business. If it's a box for women, women business, minority owned, it, those boxes need to be checked. In right. order for that to actually make a difference, you have to have your certification. And that, that is real critical. That, that's one of the things that we share in our workshops. We tell small businesses that they need to become certified. Many of them think, why even bother? Why, why do I need to get certified? Uh, we're not going to get in opportunities. But listening to Mr. Rollins right here, we can see how critical that is. Because if you don't get certified, that's one of the ways of excluding yourself from the process. You don't want to exclude yourself from the process. What you want to do is let the process exclude you. Because you know you're ready. 
Right, exactly. And it's interesting because uh, with Recycling Black Dollars, a lot of our sponsors are um, uh, corporations like Southern California Edison and Sempra Gas Company and um, some banks and so forth. So they've actually even checked for us as a nonprofit. They're looking for what are they getting out of this? So we've gotten several questions is, uh, do you guys have a database where I actually, if I'm looking for someone, a vendor that can provide a particular service for us, that I can reach out to you and you can bring that person to me ready, certified ready to do business with us. So it's even putting us in a position where we're having to make sure that you get that. So we're going to be pushing harder with that because that's how we get our funding and our sponsorship is being able to provide them with what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Because no longer can you have a nonprofit and not be able to, it'd be a win-win situation for them and for us. So what are we bringing to the table? It's not just a membership, not just being able to have an event to invite them for lunch. They don't want to eat lunch with us anymore or so pay for that lunch actually right. without knowing that on the back side of that you guys have a source of supply of people that can provide the services that we're looking for. Right. So so that's a focus for us now is right. to look for those people. So in my classes I will be looking for businesses that are more geared mm -hmm. and that are in a position to rise to that occasion. Right. Even if they're starting out, what type of business, and let's make sure we can scale it to a place where you can now do business with some other uh, organization or corporation or big business out there that needs what you have to offer. So I think that's probably some of the same things that uh, small businesses will, will need to do with you. I think the airport has uh, how to do business with the airport uh, meeting once a month. Yes, 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 yes. So that's how they can get involved that's in that exactly, process. That's exactly right. And, and yeah. again, uh, as I mentioned, we're actually going to be doing one on Tuesday at the airport at uh, 1 o'clock. Okay. Uh, at the airport hotel, Hilton Hotel. Excellent. So yep. Tuesday's the 12th. Tuesday the 12th. July 12th. Tuesday, at, July 12th uh, at, at the airport Hilton Hotel. Okay. And, and what time is that? Um, um, it begins at... I think they're doing lunch. I think it really begins at 1230. Yeah. Okay. So that's perfect. They can go to the Recycling Black Dollars Breakfast Mixer, which is next Tuesday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Excellent. Have their breakfast and then leave and go to the airport to find out more information. Excellent. Entrepreneurs, day. are you listening? <laughs> Small businesses, are you listening out there? Did you hear that? That's a great source of resource for you to tap into some opportunities. Mr. Rollins is here to guide you guys, to provide you guys insight into how to tap into those opportunities. Now, um, as commissioner of the airport, how do you measure that process? Do you have uh, reports that come out every quarter that you look at and you look at the numbers and then you hold them accountable? Absolutely. So so what we do is we, we, we started in the beginning because... Um, the challenge in the past is that there just hasn't been real policy around what the expectations are. So what we've done is we've pushed policy that says we are an airport that believes in being inclusive. We are an airport that believes that we've got to be intentional about making sure that money stays in minority business hands and local businesses' hands. So we've got to procure in a way that ensures that, that forces the marketplace to actually do what we need them to do. Because here's the truth. The marketplace will change depending on the color you want your house to be. Mm -hmm. If we say to the marketplace, every single person that you bring in should be wearing a zebra suit, guess what? Every mm -hmm. single person that we, they bring in will be wearing mm -hmm. a zebra, zebra suit. suit right? yep. So it, it is about understanding the, the power market, yeah. of, uh, of, of an institution's ability to kind of change the market dynamics exactly. as opposed to the market dynamics changing what we do. Exactly. So what we say is, with the moral and economic authority, Here's how we're going to make sure that this happens. Right. But then after that's done, after they say to us, OK, we're going to make sure that we meet your percentages. We're going to get that done. We have our team here. Then we get uh, monthly uh, them coming back to us, the staff coming back to us and saying, here's where we are on these percentages. Mm -hmm. Here's where we are on these numbers. Now, what I would say to you is we're about to spend billions more than we've ever spent before. Mm -hmm. And what that means to me is we've got to continue to beef up our own capacity to monitor and measure those things because right. the last thing that you can do is go back and get it after it's done yeah. right when it's yeah. done it's done it's so done. i right. want to know throughout the process where are we and if we aren't where we're supposed to be or where we need to be what are we going to do to fix that right. we cannot wait until it's already done because when it's done 
it's done. There's no opportunity to ensure that there's going to be participation. So I think it's really incumbent upon us to, one, create great policy that says, look, we're going to make sure that there's local participation. Two, make sure that we're getting monthly updates about where we're going. And three, if there are things where we see that there are challenges where we're not making what we're supposed to make, somebody's got to bring a solution to us. Yep. You've got to bring a solution because the answer can't be no. The answer can't be we can't get it done. Right. There is a solution if you try hard enough. Entrepreneurs, small businesses, you're listening to The Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert. And we're here with the commissioner of the Los Angeles World Airport, Mr. Nolan Rollins, and he's also the president of the Los Angeles Urban League. These are some great information that is being disseminated right now. And, uh, you know, this, this, is so, this is so dear to my heart. That's why I'm just... I'm into this right now. I'm just in awe right now of all this information I'm getting from Mr. Rollins because these are some of the same things I share with entrepreneurs and try to get them ready. Our program here is about getting businesses ready, get them business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. We really want when you go to that table to sit and look for opportunities, you're actually ready to do business. So one of the things that Crystal and I wanted to ask you real quickly is, you know, can we recreate a black Wall Street, do you think, in 2016 or 17? How, how do you see that happening? Or in our future, being um, being what's going on, you and I both know that uh, some of the issues in the African-American community is our economics. Uh, we don't have economics. And so, therefore, without that, we can't in in make anyone accountable to make sure that the policies are in place that can develop and, and create a safe environment for our, our children and our families. Um, so how do we go about doing that in today? So recycling black dollars, you know, we know what we're, we've been on this in this space for t- 27 years, and we've been saying the same thing over and over and over again. Why is it so important? Why you have to bring your dollars back into our communities, that we have to build businesses, we have to support one another so that we can do that. So that's been a challenge. It was a challenge when Muhammad started it, which is why Muhammad did that. Um, He was probably a very forward thinker when he started Recycling Black Dollars. So we're at a very critical time. And um, I think more so than ever, where we have to force ourselves to change our mindsets so that we can move forward. So how do you, can we recreate that environment? You know, what I think we have to do is we've got to be um, more intentional about defining what tragedy looks like. Right. Because what, what challenges us in our community is that tragedy generally has something to do with someone dying, someone being hurt. It, does, it never has anything to do with abject poverty in our right. communities. It never has anything to do with um, students in our schools that are at 60 to 70 percent failing. It never has anything to do with those things that are crisis. I mean, if these things were epidemics, there would be a world intervention on that. Right. There would be a world intervention. So I think what we've got to do is we've got to really be the owners of our narrative. We've got to say that, listen, we're in a place right now in South L.A. where uh, double-digit unemployment is unacceptable. Right. We're in a place in South L.A. where not utilizing minority businesses is unacceptable, where our, where our school system's failing our African-American uh, young women and, and men, unacceptable. But we also have got to be in a position where we're actually able to back up with solutions to those things. Mm -hmm. So do I think it can happen? I do. But we've got to be committed to creating our own narrative around what the solution is and what the challenge is. Because it's really easy to be mad about the visceral things that happen every day. But it's more difficult for people to understand the underlying root cause and or circumstance Our brothers and sisters are on the corner because they have no other things to do. Right. Job opportunities, business opportunities. Our schools aren't producing the way that they should produce because there's no real force in the schools to ensure that our children are being educated in the way that they're supposed to be. These things are, I think, critical to our survival. They're critical to our survival. I mean, we're having conversations about challenges with with communities and police officers we need to be having conversations about communities and police officers and the economy and our schools and all of these things because they are so interconnected but what's most difficult for us is to march for 
this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. right? Because this is the stuff that makes a difference. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes, that's that's very good. That's very good information. Um, you know, I, I personally believe and, and agree with a lot of what you say with regard to us doing what we need to do in the minority community, uh, whether you're Latino, you're Asian, you're black. You know, it doesn't matter which ethnicity you belong to. We got to work together and build these resources and make sure that we we strive ourselves to become self-sufficient instead of having to depend on rely on other outside sources. And we, we've we got to be the, the owner of our own story. We got to write our own story. We got to be our own destiny. Exactly. So so this is really powerful. Yeah. It's really powerful. I, I mean, listen, when you when when people talk about um, Black Wall Street and people talk about what happened in Tulsa at that time, what we've got to remember is that's an economic solution. Right. It's, yes. You, yes. When you talk about Black Wall Street, yes. you're not having a conversation about how many mothers are hugging sons, how many fathers no. are kissing children. Yes. You're talking about an economic condition. Yes. Right. So my position is simply this. Again, poverty will not be cured by a hug. It is an economic Dominic. problem yes. that needs an economic solution. So when I, th- when I hear things like Black Wall Street, I'm simply saying to myself, we need to condition our minds in a way that we're bringing economic solutions to our problems Mm -hmm. as opposed to just emotional solutions. Exactly. Because when we're fighting emotionally, the rest of the marketplace is fighting economically. And you have everyone taking the money out while we're just mad on the sidelines. That's right. And that's not going to get us where we need to be. That's not where our power actually is. Our power is in our ability to describe and define our challenge and describe and define what the solution is going to be and make sure that that has an economic lens that ensures that people move from the position that they're in to where they're going. I I talk about this train all the time and the trains that they're building and those things. And what I fundamentally have said is that, listen, for me, building these trains is not about moving one a person from one place to another. It's about moving them in their station of life. Yeah. Exactly. So if they can get access to a job in another place, it's moving their station in life. Yeah. If they can get to places that they could not get to before, it's about moving their station in life. The train is just a mechanism or to a get tool to get you there. Right, exactly. That's all that is. Right, it's right. just a tool to get you there. But what are we doing to move people in their stations of life? That's the stuff that we've got to focus on. And we have to be able to close that wealth gap. Absolutely. Because right now we're on this end, and it's such a huge gap yeah. that it really sets us up for the tragedies that we're in. Yeah. Because you're always in that need mm-hmm. posi- position. But entrepreneurship is the, the, the tool that actually grows economies. Mm-hmm. That's it, because yeah. you're creating new businesses. When we had a recession in 20, oh, 2008, 2009, there were a number of businesses that closed, a number of occupations, a number of um, industries that will no longer come back because there's no more place for them. They've been displaced by what's the new and the new trends. And so a lot of, I think, is our businesses, when we're thinking of a business concept, you need to think of a business that's of today Mm -hmm. that can grow in today. And, And to create wealth, you have to be looking at tech businesses and businesses that actually have the capacity to become public owned businesses because then you have stock then that's wealth that's where the wealth comes not just selling your product and your in your service to onesie twosie people no you're talking stock people mm-hmm. buying into and, 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 and into the equity of your your organization your company right. and that's the mindset we need to change from thinking small and moms and pops to thinking large because there are other ethnicities that are out there doing that and they have far less. When you look at India, which their poverty and the number of people that they have living in their country succeeds ours on every level. Mm -hmm. But that Mumbai and and New Delhi, they have become the most wealthiest with the tech industry. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's, that's That's a serious point right there. And uh, uh, for those of you who just joined us, we're on the business zone. And uh, Crystal and I, Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic, we're here with the president of the Los Angeles Urban League, Mr. Nolan Rollins. And uh, he's also the commissioner of the Los Angeles World Airport. And, you know, he's sharing some vital information with entrepreneurs, how they can access resources and opportunities at the airport. Now, Mr. Rollins, I want to ask you this question right here real quickly. Um, At the Urban League, 
you have a variety of different programs for entrepreneurs and small businesses. What are some of the programs that you think that uh, is available right now that can uh, assist many of the small businesses in our community? Yeah, so, you know, we, we, we have an entrepreneurship center at the organization, and you know, we are focused on um, those businesses, some of who are startups, some who are helping up and down the alignment. But at the same time, I'm really interested in um, so, so I'm a fundamental believer that we've got to strengthen the middle class. Mm-hmm. Like I flat out believe that uh, if we're going to create a place for people who aren't in the middle class to go to, that place has to be there. Yes. So I think that those businesses that are sitting in that space, we have a number of businesses that are doing, and, and you mentioned it a little earlier. We have a number of businesses that are doing business right there with, with large business, with large corporations. Yes. I think that there's an opportunity to strengthen the capacity of those businesses to do more business with those large corporations, in addition to hiring more people Mm -hmm. who look like we do, who can actually do. So I think that there has to be, uh, it's a both and. I think we have to strengthen the existing businesses because we need them to grow. We Mm -hmm. need them to be stronger. I think we need to have on ramps for uh, startup businesses who are understanding where the marketplace is going. So, so for us at the Urban League, those are the kinds of things that we're really interested in and focused on mm-hmm. because we think that in order to take advantage of the market that's coming, we've got to have these established businesses to play. And some of them, I, and, and I hope that people hear me on this one. Some of them are going to have to play together. Mm-hmm. Yes, we have got to joint venture. Yes. I mean, it, it's it's one of the most uh, amazingly difficult things for me to actually realize or fathom is when you look at big contracts at airports or wherever, and you look at the teams. There's someone and someone else. Yes, yep. they're joint There's venturing. Someone and someone, someone else. else. <laughs> yes, they are. J- they are doing JVs all the time yes. because what the reality is is that together they are far more powerful oh, than yes. individuals. Yes, exactly. Much stronger. And I think that we've got to get our minds wrapped around that because here's the thing: if you can do a million and someone else can do a million, you guys can do two and a half million exactly. together. Exactly. Together. Exactly. You can do two and a half together. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then you can continue building that. So I think that. That, that what we're focusing on is moving in a direction where we can get more of that done. Uh, so I understand that we have a call right here, and I think this is going to be great for uh, our guest. So, uh, caller, who are you? What's your name, and uh, where are you calling from? Hi, this is uh, Ishmael from, from Dallas calling back. Hey, Ishmael. How you doing, sir? Good, good. I'm really enjoying the show. Thank I, you. I just wanted to... I just wanted to Ask about the Black Wall Street and and also how you know we, we all know what happened. Um, with with Tulsa, um, not only were they upset about you know we were doing it for self, what a lot of people don't understand is that they also were upset that we were copying New York's Wall Street, mm. and and they were like, no, this is for you. This is our way of doing business and also when you think about wall street do we really want to I, I don't i know we should have a wall street mindset but as far as the way they did business they're dealing with a lot of made-up numbers when you really get into what, how wall street works a lot of fiat currency uh made up numbers so i think we should have a quote-unquote black wall street but it should be based on something real a yes. real currency where we have real things so when a recession happens we have a real product, a real service, and, and we are able to sustain that. So I, I think we need to have that mindset when we do talk about recreating something. It needs to be done in a morally right way when we recreate it. We shouldn't copy something that, that we know the CI currency isn't going to last. I think so that, I that, have to add that. I think that's a, I think that's a very good point, Ishmael. And uh, I'll have our guest, Mr. Rollins, uh, address that a little bit because um, he's got a lot of insight on that too. So, uh, Mr. Rollins, what do you think about yeah, that? You know, Ishmael, I, I, I do think that that's a wonderful point. And I think what the what what the what Black Wall Street represents for us right now is a space in time where there was economic empowerment. Yes. Right. That's what we're really talking about. What we're talking about is how do you create a space and time where you have the economic empowerment that's necessary for you to be strong? So whether it be uh, a, a publicly traded or what that looks like from a Wall Street or NASDAQ kind of standpoint, I don't think that that's the, the key. 
I think when, we, when we're talking about Black Wall Street, we're talking about empowerment. How do we create an economic condition that allows everyone in that condition to actually flourish if they're willing to work hard and roll their sleeves up? Let me be clear. I mean, this, right. this, is, this is about working. This is about mm -hmm. working hard. So, um, so I think that that's where, really where, for us today, the concept lies. It, it's not just about, for me, it's not just about a street. It's about a mindset that actually right. pushes an economic agenda. Right. So, so I think, so, so Ishmael, I think that you, uh, that you bring up uh, great points. Uh, at, at the same time, this is about a, a mindset. How do we essentially get to a place where we're actually creating value in a way that it is strengthening or changing and moving the economy. Excellent. Because when you see, I mean, listen, let's just, those were um, economic and capitalist forces. Because here's the reality. The reality is when you create something that is challenged of, to another system, when you have a business that's in competition with another business, one of two things is going to happen. Either they're going to continue to be able to go, they're going to fight all the time mm -hmm. someone is going to try to destroy the other because mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's about dominating market share exactly exactly it's about dominating market share yeah so when i look at when we look at that time the difference is is the time in america mm -hmm. right the difference is it wasn't just about uh, a a a battle an economic battle between uh, a new york wall street and a, a black wall street it was also about a subservient United States population mm -hmm. being oppressed as normal with a with a with the the the, the, the white power structure. Right. So that's a, another part that we've got to be really really intellectually honest about was when Black Wall Street actually existed. Mm -hmm. It existed in a time period where uh, you were as likely to be killed as an African American who was upwardly mobile mm -hmm. as you were to be able to walk down the street. So when we look at the disruption of that kind of thing, we, we've got to be honest with that. It's not just it wasn't just a an economic collapse. It was a human collapse mm -hmm. purposefully. Right. Right. Purposefully. And I think also when we look at today and the buying power, the consumer power of the African-American, we're, we're spending one point two trillion dollars um, consuming that with someone else and it's not coming back in. So Ismail, I think when we talk about that and from where I'm call, uh, speaking of is that it was also a time when we had no choice but to support our own businesses, right? Because we couldn't go anywhere else. We couldn't go to white banks and get loans. So we had to create our own banks. We couldn't go to white doctors to get treatment. We had to have our own doctors, our own attorneys. So we were at a time where it's, you know that's not atypical for, an Af for, for us, for those of us that are descendants of slaves, to work together and support one another. There, there's a, um, uh, uh, a businessman in Los Angeles, his name is Mr. Leon Gar, and Mr. Gar is a self-made millionaire. And um, he actually was, at one point, he bought Founders Bank when there was no one to take it over. He came in with a check and bought it um, because he believed in entrepreneurship. He believed in his community. He believed in his people. And he, But he said when he first started his businesses, um, it was like his ice wasn't cold enough for us. And, and that's what we have to get out of. There's another uh, billionaire or multimillionaire. He was down in Birmingham, Alabama. His name is A.G. A. G. Titan. He also was a man that was multi in in the in the 60s he was a multimillionaire but he created businesses for his people he had a he saw a problem and he solved that problem he had the solution to that problem but again we you know, it is it, like we don't support our own we have quality businesses and then we have businesses that need help but and, and, and that's why we're here, right, is that, to help those businesses become quality businesses. And, and that's why I'm thinking that, um, you know, what I'm hearing here today is excellent. I'm thinking that what you just said about the spending power of the African-American market and the spending power that we know exists within the Latino market, it's a $600 billion spending power. We should be able to come together. Those, those two groups should be able to come together and maximize our capacity instead of having to wait for opportunities from somewhere else. Look, I, I agree completely. I mean, I, what, what I think that we've got to do is, so I am fiercely uh, protective of the city that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And if the money that we're actually spending 
isn't majority staying in the city, mm-hmm. we've got a problem. We got That's a right. problem. We That's got right. a problem. So if everyone, you know, we, so, and I'll just say, and I want to make sure that I, I get the, the correct information because while I'm on air, people are sending me information right. about when this, the, air, the LAX <laughs> thing is going to happen. Like, you're just great people. Um, but, but when, for me, listen, um, we're about to spend, it's going to be roughly in the double digit billions of dollars. Right. Okay. In that spend, there are a few things that we're going to be doing that there are only five companies in the world that can do, Mm -hmm. right? So off the top, we know that that's where that's going to go. There are only five companies in the world that can do it. One of those is going to win. Mm -hmm. Okay. Below that, we have all of these other opportunities. Mm -hmm. So my position is, while we may not do this part, there's all of these other opportunities that are multi billions of dollars of opportunity. Right. So the question for me is how much of that stays local? That's right. right. That's exactly. it. All the other stuff really isn't important to me because, yeah. f- because frankly, it's out of your reach. We're, we're in the region. <laughs> Feeding Texas is yeah. not my problem. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's not. That's we've got to feed L.A. South L.A. Cal- we've got to feed. Mm-hmm. We've got to feed our economic beast with the money that we're generating yeah. here. And if we're not doing that, shame on us. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Shame and I on think on, on a national level, all our organizations and people of uh, of any organization, the Urban League or any of the organizations that are working to better the uh, the business community we all should be thinking that what about what is going on in our place what in our state making sure because if we each do that state by state region by yeah. region yeah we can make some major inroads yeah. I would think and yeah. we don't have to accomplish the whole world we just need to deal with where we are right. so if you're a business owner in your city or your state regional then regional or, yeah. you want to make sure but as a business owner I think George Frazier says that money is green yeah. so you want to be able to sh- your services or your products to be bought by everybody and we're in a global world now so you don't have to just sell in your community you can sell everywhere, but you do want to make sure that you are creating those businesses that the people where they that have hands on, especially if you're brick and mortar, touchy feely, yeah. they can get to you and get what they need. But at the same time, your focus shouldn't just be here. Your focus should be all over globally because that's the kind of world we live in today. Excellent. And you can create those economic. We can create humongous amounts of, of, of equity and uh, economic empowerment in our cities if we're expanding our positions of how we do business. Right. And, and I believe Dr. Anderson, um, Claude Anderson, of the power economics, that's what he talks about is creating that home base, but also creating an expansive base so that we are whole across the country and across the world. Excellent. These are points that's well taken. And again, on behalf of Crystal and myself, I really, 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 really want to thank uh, Commissioner Rollins here from the L.A. Uh, Los Angeles World Airport and also from the Los Angeles Urban League. This is phenomenal. We truly appreciate you coming in today. Absolutely. We want to thank you for visiting with us and uh, making our first show uh, a, a great show. So thank you very much, sir. So we're going to take a break right now. We're going to take a two-minute break. So, again, you're on the Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert, and uh, we're going to make this great for you. Thank you. Well, we're back, and wow, wasn't that fantastic? Nolan uh, just provided us with so much wonderful information and the opportunities that's coming to Los Angeles. And I'm sure this is happening all over the country because um, the building and the expansion of our, everyone's airports is, is really prominent when you travel across country. So um, you need to look into your own airports and see what opportunities are there for you if you're if you're in another state outside of Los Angeles. And of course, for Los Angeles, you you truly truly want to um, participate in in any of the the workshops. So I'm going to put on our website, um, which is up and live as of today. It is um, the Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert.com. You can go there and I 
by later this afternoon, I will put up the information that Mr. Rollins is put, giving, providing for us, as well as a couple of other events that are going on. One of the ones is, um, there's two. Um, I have, I'm participating in both of them. I'm going to be an, uh, one of the teachers at the Los Angeles Urban League and Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship Biz Camp that uh, this is my third year working with this particular program because just as important it is for adult entrepreneurs, it is very important for us to plant the seed with our young people very early on to, about entrepreneurship. I think so, too. Because that's, that's our future. Oh, yeah, that's definitely our future. And we need to start fostering and, and, and grooming them. And, and grooming them. So one of the things, uh, I've always worked with kids in some capacity uh, in my career. And so right now, um, there's two organizations that I'm working with with kids. But the one that I'm going to be teaching is uh, going to be uh, the Nifty Biz Camp. And it's July 25th to August 5th. Um, the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship provides programs that inspire young people to stay in school and to recognize business opportunities and to plan for successful futures. So this summer, Nifty is partnering with the Los Angeles Urban League uh, to host an accelerated version of Nifty's award-winning Owning Your Future curriculum called BizCamp. BizCamp, sponsored by City foundation teaches the entrepreneurial mindset and that includes innovation self-reliance comfort with um, small rich smart risks alongside of traditional business skills marketing supply and demand and expense management all the things that our adult entrepreneurs are doing but these are this is for the kids but encouraging our students to see themselves as the driver of their futures and providing them the skills so this camp is going to take place as a two-week summer camp for kids between the ages of 14 and 18 to be held at the Los Angeles Urban League from July 25th to August August 5th uh, daily. They come in the class from 8 o'clock in the morning, just like a job, and they leave at 5, and we will be teaching them entrepreneurial skill sets. I love that. And within the 10 days, these kids will come out with a business plan. Oh, beautiful. And they will be, they will use that business plan to compete for it's like a shark tank. They will get up and pitch their business and, and they will have a presentation, a pitch presentation, and then there will be cash awards funded to the first and second and third oh, place wow. prizes. That's amazing. And that's from this camp. And then at that point, they're eligible to um, participate in the regional and then the, the national uh, camp, uh, uh, competitions. So this is my fourth year. This year I will be the one of the primary teachers. I'm going to Nifty University in a couple of weeks to learn the curriculum and teach it in that format. Mm. And I'm excited. And this is That's something great. really cool. This is our third year. We usually teach 25 kids. So we're looking for kids right now. We need uh, to fill up some spaces. We want, um, we want to have 25 Five kids. So if you have a child that is excited about being an entrepreneur or, or interested in becoming an entrepreneur, um, you can email Bonnie Thomas Jeter at BT hyphen Jeter at the uh, Los Angeles Urban League. That's L-A-U-L dot org or call her at 323-299-9660 extension 2212. It's a phenomenal program. The kids have an amazing time and to watch them come in without any uh, even not even the inkling of idea of what it is to be a business plan, uh, to be an entrepreneur, and then to leave out and become that. Wow, it's a That's pretty amazing. awesome experience. That's amazing. And, and as a t as one of the instructors. It's an amazing experience to to be with them. And we're also looking for those of you that would like to be a mentor or a coach, a volunteer for an hour to come in and talk to the kids. So if you're interested in that, you can contact us at contact us at the uh, business zone with Gilbert and Crystal dot com and send me some information and I will get back to you. Our phone number is three, two, three. 906-7004. You can contact us there and email us if you have an interest. We really like to expose our kids to other entrepreneurs Excellent. that look like them so that they understand and know that this there's a mentor. There's people that care and people that are really interested in helping them to become that person. Excellent. Excellent. I also want to uh, do a quick shout out here for the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, uh, of which I'm the procurement chairperson. 
And uh, I was appointed to that position last year, December 2015. And uh, we've been doing some great things for uh, woman-owned businesses and uh, uh, Latino-owned businesses within the community as well. And uh, the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, they're having a kickoff for their convention, the 37th annual convention, which is going to be held in Riverside. And it's going to be held at the Riverside City Hall at 3900 Main Street in Riverside. And uh, this event will begin at 11 a.m. Uh, on uh, the 15th. That's next Friday, July 15th. And it's going to go way beyond uh, 7, 8 o'clock at night. This is going to be a great event. There will be press conferences, elected official roundtable. Uh, there will also be uh, the kickoff reception. And this is so phenomenal, Crystal, that um, what we do is we had four RFPs that went out recently on this. And wow. we're, where we're looking for small businesses within the community to participate on those. Um, I'm not sure if it's as closed yet, but they were looking for entertainers. They're looking for printers. They're looking for um, photographers. And uh, they're looking for uh, 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 small businesses who can make awards. Wow. Yes, uh, you know, because they're going to have award reception, so they need someone who can make those plaques. So those are the four types of RFPs that are out there. So, yeah, the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, they've got me traveling all over the state of California. Two days ago, I was in Modesto and Sacramento teaching uh, capability statement development workshops for them. So this has been really, really wonderful, and uh, we've been getting great participation. So I just wanted to throw that out real quickly next Friday. Uh, July 15th, uh, starting at 11 o'clock in Riverside. Oh, fantastic. So there again, that's the purpose of the Business Zone. We're bringing you resources and opportunities um, so that you can become that business to apply for those RFPs. Yes. I mean, there are many printers out there that did not realize that they could uh, uh, position themselves to do business to business. Exactly. Uh, a lot more guarantees in a business to business. Oh, yes. A lot more money involved in a business to business. And and again, as Nolan mentioned earlier, being able to partner up and joint venture with other people to help you fulfill whatever the obligation is for those particular opportunities, that's the way to go. In that's fact, the way to go. Uh, in fact, Gilbert and I, that's the relationship we have. Exactly. He, he's a certified business owner and and I'm his, a subcontractor, and I teach a, a workshop, a, a class, a 12-week program over at Mount Sac. And I'm teaching uh, individuals from the Los Angeles County of Education office, teaching them skill sets on how to become bookkeepers and accounting and so that they can get jobs. And we're on our third, um, third year. Third, third year. year. Uh, so our season, fall season comes up. I got a call. Okay. So we got a call right now, so we want to check this out and see uh, a caller on the line. Say your name and where you're calling from, please. Hi, Gilbert. It's Marjorie Gale from Los Angeles. Hey, Marjorie. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Congratulations to you and Crystal. Thank you, Thank Marjorie. You. Marjorie is one of my closest associates. We go way back. Thank you, Marjorie. I'm so excited for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. So how are we, how are we doing so far? Great, great. And I, I really want to touch on um, um, what the, uh, your speaker was talking about with joint ventures. I think that is so important. That's something that I preach to my clients. Yes. So I just really think that's important. Definitely. And that's that's the new way of doing business right now. And that's what Crystal and I have been pu pushing out there for small businesses, that in order to be stronger in what you do, you need to collaborate you need to form strategic partnerships and that's really where we're going with that that's excellent so we're, we're happy that you call in marjorie and we're hoping that you continuously be a listener and a supporter of our program and send many small businesses to us so we can help them to build their capacity so they can be become business ready contract ready and bank loan ready most definitely. All right. Thank you very much, Thank Marjorie. you, Marjorie. Pre All right. It. Bye, Crystal and Gilbert. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you. So let's That's talk wonderful. about... Yeah, That's I know, wonderful. huh? Somebody that, that you know. Where are yeah. my people? Where y'all people are? <laughs> I, yeah, I know you all out there. I didn't send all my information out there and, and, <laughs> and, and flooded the uh, the internet with the information about this workshop. And so let me hear from you guys. So, Gilbert, let's talk about... Um, 
because Nolan was talking about the opportunities. Yes. So let's talk about what it takes. What type of businesses can, can, can succeed? And what are the seven ways to tell if your business is, is in that position to be succeeding? Last week when we came on the rollout show, uh, I had made a comment that um, some of the businesses that I work with, uh, when they come into a workshop that I have, I'm encouraging my, them to entrepreneurs to look, think bigger, to think broader. Yeah. Through, um, if you're going to be in a t-shirt business, and it's not that I have anything against t-shirt business, but being a t-shirt business that is is a branding business. Mm-hmm. You're the t-shirt that you're the people that come and create the t-shirts for the business zone, right. or you create the t-shirts for Morris Media. So being able to go to and do business to business, that's a much more secure. Um, op- uh, 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 opportunity yeah. because that person is probably going to come back. It's yeah. not going to be a one-time visit. They're going to come back and they're going to order large volumes of whatever it is they're they're looking for. So be that person because those are the people that can do RFPs because mm-hmm. they may, at the National Latino Association, may want t-shirts yeah. for a conference. Right. Then you want to be that person, the manufacturing person, the person, the silk screening person. Right. Um, so that's basically what what I'm what I was implying if you're going to get into business because there's a lot to mm-hmm. go into business yeah, it can yeah. be initially there's no funding out there for you so you're really funding your own businesses right. so if you're going to do that and the sacrifice that you're going to make in that first three to five three to five years yeah. then you want to make sure that the rewards on the other side is far greater than what you would have had if you were working for someone. And I think one of the things that you were trying to share with the listeners last uh, last week on the on the program was that if you're going to manufacture or distribute T-shirts, you want to make sure that, one, you have the capacity to handle large volumes because a T-shirt business is a volume business. And also... Uh, lenders, they uh, they don't look favorably on certain types of businesses. So, in order to give you a chance and an opportunity, what we what we were trying to say last week is that one, you got to make sure you know your numbers, know your production numbers, what you need, how many you need to produce in order to break even. And when you do break even, you want to be able to exceed that 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 number so that you can then make a profit, so you can pay your rent, you can pay your bills, and you still have some profit le- left over. So that's really what was being said last week and it probably uh, didn't come across very well to you but what we're saying is if you have a t-shirt business there's a lot more that goes into that that you really want to look into you want to look at your gross profit margins you want to look at your break-even point you want to look at your ratios because most t-shirt business has to be self-sustainable uh, it's very difficult for bank to provide lending uh, funds to those types of businesses because they don't see it as being much of a, a, a viable entity. They see it as a, a risk avert business. So that's what we're trying to say. Exactly. Now, some of there's some businesses out there, some fantastic ideas. So how do you know if the business is going to work? So some of the the uh, there's seven ways to know that is um, your idea has a strong a strong point of difference. Are you doing what everybody else is doing or is there a certain twist to your business that is unique to you? That's your unique uh, value proposition. Right. So um, so you want to look at that. And is it a business that people can go, wow, I want that. When are you going to start that? You know, that's you already know you have some people that or a marketplace that is already interested. And is your business solving a problem? Do you have a solution that you can solve a problem? Because that is the key, right? That, there. That's the key, right? Because they people, if you create a business that people have to have, mm-hmm. not that it's a luxury, it's a have to have. Yeah, food is a have to have. Mm-hmm. Housing is a have to have. Mm-hmm. So if you're creating businesses that people have to have, um, and not a luxury business, so in any given economic downturn, you you're gonna still eat. You're going to still need housing. You're going to need still gasoline for your vehicle or a bus or transportation, a bike. Those are in this that that are 
tie that are tested across time. It doesn't matter what's going on. So when you're thinking of your business, is it a have to have? And one of those things that we want to add to that, uh, which I taught in my workshop two days ago when I was in Sacramento and Modesto, is uh, one of the participants asked me, "Okay, so my business uh, it 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 solve a, a void in the marketplace." And I said, "That's great." The purpose of us being in business is to solve a pain in the marketplace. So if your void is big enough to become a pain, then yes, you're in a good business. You're in a good business. And that's something you want to look at. If it's not a pain that you're solving and solving that pain better than your competitor, right. then you know that you know there's something you want to look at in order to get it addressed oh, Right, exactly. And you want to know, is your business hard to copy? Is it something hard to copy? If, if everyone can have that same business, they can put you out of business. Mm -hmm. So you got to be constantly being innovative, being able to grow to that next level, not being stagnant where you started. You, it's got to have the growing part. It's got to have legs to it. The other area is, do you, have a, uh, do you have hard evidence that there's a demand for it? I mean, when Facebook came up, he had a, a bit of a demand. There was, a, what was the other one that was out there? Um, that was uh, MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> so MySpace was a platform, mm -hmm. and, and at one point, the only platform. Mm -hmm. But then when Facebook came up, it had some arms and legs that, you know, it is basically. Uh, MySpace didn't have. It didn't have, and it put MySpace out of business. So you don't want to be, you, know, you want to be, be the disruptor yeah. and not the one that's being disrupted. And again, what that did, that solved the pain much Money. better than the competitor. Exactly. So you your own unique proposition oh, in yes. it. And that the marketing is growing. Is it going to tap out? Is it going to be? And remember pagers. Yeah. No longer need. Once right. cell phones came on yeah, on board, no, no, no longer need. Right. Even flip phones. I think I just read the other day, even BlackBerry. Now, that has been tried and true in the <laughs> business community, that one type of phone that yeah. BlackBerry used. Now they're phasing that out. Mm -hmm. So is the market constantly growing, wanting more, needing more, and mm -hmm. can you meet that marketplace? Right. Um, the market, will it accept your price? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we think, oh, I, this is the best deal in the world, so I'm going to charge $1,000 for it. But yeah. really, who is willing to pay for who's that? Who's going to pay for that? And are you going for the luxury marketplace? Yeah. Do you have what it takes to be able to sell in the luxury marketplace? Yeah. So you have to ask yourself all of those questions. you got to know who your target demographic is. Y exactly. You do, And that you can reach that target. You can know who they are, yeah. but do you have the network that can get you to that marketplace because yes. that's not everybody, yes. right? And then the final one, do you have the, bil the ability to convert the idea into a business? Mm, that's because a very it, good right? one. That's a, a great very good one. A lot of people have ideas that they think should become businesses, but they're not really businesses. They're a hobby. Exactly. When you do a hobby and you're not being paid for it or com uh, the, the clients are not willing to pay you for it, that's a hobby. As a hobby. <laughs> and then can that translate into a business? Can you elevate that or scale that up into a business yes. and, and it be able to sustain employees and and, and um, all the other of the financial Solve the pain in the marketplace. Solve the pain in the marketplace. Or is it just for that particular instance for those particular people? Yeah. So those are some of the things that um, when I have a business plan class, that's what I, I, I help you address and help you identify yeah. so that you're not wasting your time and yeah. your energy because what that does is it creates a, you to be discouraged exactly and, and you may have a fantastic idea but being open and i think and you probably have gotten this people come up to you i want to start a business Gabriel. i want to start a business <laughs> okay so what is it i can't tell you <laughs> you can't tell me yeah because you somebody might steal it <laughs> really so how are you going to develop this secret business <laughs> how, are you, how are you going to conduct market research how are you going to do test market you're going to do case studies how are you going to do focus groups? Nobody right, knows. because you're not going to tell anybody what the product is. You're just going to, it's a secret because somebody's going to steal it. So being, but it doesn't have to be a secret if you've done all your work, if you've yes. done all your homework, all your research, and you know that there's something that you're delivering that's unique to you. So the small business pro is unique to you, right? Yes. yes. Uh, even when I do, I'm probably one of the, the ones that are out there training QuickBooks. There's not too many people out there, or at least 
that are stepped up to let people know that they do the training of QuickBooks. And I've been using QuickBooks since 1988 when they first started it. So I'm one of the ones in this marketplace that have the capability and skill set to do that. So I have a large, uh, there's a large marketplace for me to work with. Um, uh, I am actually looking for new bookkeepers and people that would like to learn how to use it so then that we could bring on a staff of people to teach what we're doing at some of the other schools. So that would be really, that would be great. So if anybody out there in listening land are interested in learning how to uh, teach and be a trainer in that, with that particular program, we're open to, and I'm open to teaching you how to do that so we can bring you on as part of our team to help out. So before we, Wow, this two hours went by I know, really it's quick. Amazing. So Got one 13 of the minutes left. <laughs> I know. So I I, I want to let you know that I have a business plan co- class that's going to be starting August twenty third. It's going to be eight weeks. It's going to be from seven to eight thirty at the Los Angeles Urban League, which is at thirty four fifty Mount Vernon Boulevard in Los Angeles. But the uniqueness about this class is there's going to be one class. A, two classes a month that you will meet me in person and then the other classes are all going to be done online. Excellent. So you don't have to be in Los Angeles. Even the, the in-person classes are going to be recorded so that you will have access to those. So if anyone across the countries that want to um, uh, come uh, participate in my class or be a, a student in my class, then I would love to have you. You can, again, reach us, contact us at uh, the Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert dot com or call us. Call me at three, two, three, nine, oh, six, seven, zero, zero, four. And the information will be up on our website, which is at uh, Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert dot com. And I'd love to have you as a class uh, in my class. I have a lot of fun in those classes. And it's just amazing to see how many um, people actually come out of it with the business plan attack. And I have a number of success stories that I will that. will share with you and actually have them on the show yeah. over the, over, you know, as we move forward um, to let you know what the process was and how much fun. And next week, we really have a fun show because the kids that have been in some of our previous biz camps, they're going to come out next week. Oh, good. Uh, we've got about three or four kids that are absolutely a delight. They're going to come and share their experience. And so if anyone has any children... Between the ages of 14 and 18, please reach out to us and we will get you an application so your, your child can be part of this two-week amazing camp. Sounds great. That sounds wonderful. It's amazing how time flies. Uh, we're offering, uh, this is a business zone with uh, Crystal and Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic. Uh, this is our first show, and uh, we're doing this every Friday from 3 to 5, and we're very excited about this. This is a platform where we help small businesses to become, to become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. And uh, our mission is really to help them to merge business opportunity along with entrepreneurship and supply diversity in order to create success. So this has been a wonderful show. Our guest earlier was phenomenal, Mr. Nolan Rollins from the Los Angeles uh, Urban League. He's a president there. He's also the commissioner of the Los Angeles World Airport. And he had some great words of wisdom to share with us and small businesses out there. Uh, We're looking forward to doing some great things with a lot of other small businesses and entrepreneurs on this program. And as we go along, we'd like you to call us, call us here and uh, give us your, your input, your feedback, and let us know how you feel about this show, how it's helping your small business. Uh, right now, our phone number here is 323-293-3375. That's 323-293-3375. We'll take one more caller before we go. And again, we're giving away our, our Small Biz Pro software. It's a cloud-based system that helps small businesses to uh, uh, manage their business. And it provides you business management opportunities. It provides you procurement opportunities and market research. It, it, it provides a great tool for your small business. If you think of, of finding a document, you can find it in 10 seconds or less using this system. It's very easy to use. It's user-friendly. And you don't have to be computer literate. Uh, it's so easy that anyone can use it. 
Right, exactly. So we're excited, you guys. Uh, I hope you guys have gotten a lot of information from our 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 guest because he is just so knowledgeable. And some of the things that we spoke of this afternoon helped um, uh, spark some of your interest in becoming an entrepreneur or wanting to grow your business and be one of those individuals that can be one of those certified business owners and really change how you do business. Yes, and uh, really what we have here, uh, I've got a class coming up uh, on um, Saturday, July 16th. This is a free workshop teaching small businesses how to use the software Small Biz Pro. This is going to be with the Moreno Valley Black Chamber, and this will be in Riverside at the, um, I think it's called the, the the Pinecrest Golf Golf Club. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll get the address on that, and I'll make it available. We'll put it on our Facebook page and our website. But that's a, a, a class that will teach you how to use Small Biz Pro. It's free of cost. You don't have to worry about paying anything for it. It's free. And also, uh, we'll uh, give away a few of those software to, to serious business owners, entrepreneurs who really want to grow their business and are serious about becoming business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. And what that means, that means that you're able to take a, 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 make a decision on taking a contract for a business on the spot or you can produce certain business documents on the spot, or if the bank has a loan that they want to offer you or a line of credit, you can provide them the documents they're looking for, the balance sheet, the profit and loss, the statement of cash flow, the tax return, any of those things. You can do it on the spot in 10 seconds or less using our system. So that's what we do here for small business. And Crystal, this has been a great ride today. It has been. So you guys can uh, like us on Facebook at uh, Facebook, The Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert. And we're also on LinkedIn with the same name and Twitter. Our Twitter account is uh, The Business Zone uh, with two Zs, B-U-S-S-I-Z-Z-O-N-E. And so um, reach out to us and um We look forward to being here for you next week. Yeah, definitely. And again, I want to remind you about the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, They're having their their annual convention. Uh, And next week is a kickoff. Next week, Friday the 15th, is uh, the kickoff for this event. And it's going to be a tremendous and phenomenal event. Uh, It's going to be held uh, downtown Riverside. And it's going to be at the city of Riverside, City Hall, and the address is 3900 Main Street in Riverside. And uh, this is being put on by the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And uh, it's going to be a great event. Uh, you'll be able to meet with other business owners, contract providers. I, again, like I say, I'm the chairperson for that procurement committee for the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So we're going to have procurement officers from uh, SoCal Edison, so Southern California Edison, and I think the gas company as well, and a few other contract providers will be there. There will be different bankers from uh, Wells Fargo, um, Chase, I think City National, and uh, Comerica. So what we're doing is getting businesses ready so they can do business with these entities. We don't want you or them to have any excuses why you can't do business. We want you to be out there because you're actually ready to do this and you can do it. So, Crystal? Well, wow, Gilbert, um, I would like to, again, extend that invitation to come out to the Recycling Black Dollars Breakfast Mixer. We will. It's Tuesday, July 12th. It is at the Denny's on Denny's Restaurant, which is a black-owned restaurant at Crenshaw and Coliseum. Uh, Our topic is health and wealth because it's just important to be healthy as you're uh, moving into your wealth. Um, So we're going to have a number of of individuals that are coming out to talk about, a number of doctors to talk about how to take care of yourself and how to... uh, exercise and eat right uh, so that you can have the stamina and the, and the uh, to be healthy business owners. And so come on out. It's from 8 to 10 in the morning. You will have an opportunity to give up your 30-second pitch and meet and network with other business owners that, uh, that will be there. Excellent. And so we'd love to have you. Uh, you can go to uh, Recycling Black Dollars website, uh, rbdmedia.com. 
dot org and get all the information that you need on the location and also check out the website and our Facebook and like us on that as well. We are doing some great things and have been in the community. Another great thing that we're excited about um, uh Gilbert is Recycling Black Dollars is a resource guide where all the black businesses are referenced in a, in a directory. So if you're looking for a particular type of business, but we're getting ready to take that and have a, a mobile app developed. And that mobile app will allow you to advertise in that space, have a link that goes directly to your website. Mm. And if you have businesses outside of Los Angeles or California, we will um, have businesses. So when, when you go into a new city, and you're looking for a black owned business, You it will pop up with a GPS locator and it will let you know where all the black owned businesses are. So if you're interested in putting your ad in, we have our drive going on it started um, this month actually and it will everything will the book will be produced but you will advertise in both the directory and you will be in the on the mobile app and the mobile app will be launched at in 2017. So Excellent. we're looking for businesses to advertise in that um, in that uh, directory as well. That's beautiful. Yeah. I think that's an excellent resource available for these small businesses. And if they use all these resources that we're putting out there, Crystal, they should be really, really on top of their game and be able to, to ex- excel tremendously. I think so. Now, we talk a little bit about the, the black business, uh, uh, black, recycling black dollars. We talk about the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Latino business. Business, uh, resources and opportunities. Just want to let you know that this program is all inclusive. It's all inclusive of all women-owned, small business, minority-owned businesses. We all come together to provide resources for all of those groups. So just want to let you all know, call us. If you have any questions at all about anything about running your business, Crystal and I, we're here to do that for you. And, and if Go ahead, I'm Crystal. I'm sorry. And if you want to, um, if some friends of yours didn't get to catch the show this afternoon live, it is archived. It will be on our web, on our Facebook page. So go to our Facebook page. I believe it's also at Morris Media. Tonight? Tonight. All right. Uh, Morris Media Live. Uh, dot com. And you can go there. I believe it's archived there. At least one show is. And then we have a YouTube channel and you will be able to find it there. And we'll be doing another blast out and our website. You can find us there. So that way you can share it with other people. If you found the information that we were sharing valuable or you missed some of the things or didn't get to write them down because you were driving, then you can actually go there and be able to listen to it in the comfort of your home. Excellent. I love that. I love that. And like I say, this is a business zone. For those of of you who missed it, you're just tuning in. This is The Business Zone with uh, uh, Crystal and Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic. And we'll be here every Friday from 3 to 5. And uh, we'll provide you information, tools, and uh, resources that will help your business. And uh, uh, w- what we'd like to say is so long right now. We're tuning out. And uh, just log into our, our website to get additional information on this. Uh, Crystal. Great show. Great Thank show, you. Gilbert. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We had a great time. We're out of here. <laughs> I'm a businessman. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, 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 oh. I'm a businessman. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. Crystal Mitchell, do you have my business plan? Just review the pages of my marketing plan. Crystal Mitchell, do you have my business plan? Just review the pages of my marketing plan. Got my capability statement and I'm ready to go. Got my balance sheet, my P&L, my statement of cash flow. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, 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 oh. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't need a loan. I don't need a loan. Yes, I need a line of credit. Well, I need a line of credit. Well, see, I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur, oh yeah, I'm a 
I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Ooh, yeah. Hi, this is Crystal Mitchell. And Gilbert Buchanan, the small business paramedic. And this is the Business Zone, Fridays, 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. On MorrisMediaLive.com. <laughs> 